news. Greetings, fellow Watford fans. Omar here, and it's time for the Yuan's 10 minute take on Watford 2, Arsenal 3 at the Vic. Another loss for Watford at home. It's their eighth consecutive home loss this season. That is not a happy recap. This is a 10 minute take. And it's a disappointing performance in the end for Watford in that second half, where though they started very well with an attacking fervor and a desire and a passion and a willingness to go forward and take chances, they did not end this game particularly well. And defensive lapses were the major reason why Watford find themselves on the end of a 3-2 defeat against an Arsenal side who were very good, very competent, played very well indeed. But the goals that we gave away were very poor indeed. Despite the very good finishes, Watford put Arsenal in a position to finish those goals superbly because obviously Arsenal have the skill and the technical ability. But the opportunities leading to those goals were given away by poor Watford defending. And it's inexcusable that a player of Tom Cleverley's veteran leadership and leverage um, would be get, make, giving balls away along his 18-yard box when he should be clearing his lines. That, to me, was the most disappointing part of this game, the defensive mistakes, particularly from veteran players who should be taking care of business with the ball in front of their box. It was not to be today, and Watford were punished dearly for those errors, lollygagging on the ball. These are the things that have burned Watford all season long, particularly at the Vic. The lollygagging on the ball in the Premier League when you know that in the Premier League you have very little time on the ball and there is no way that you can spend any more time than more than a second on the ball because it will be taken from you. And Arsenal, aside of that kind of quality, you cannot do that against. Arsenal even gave Watford roots back into this game in the second half after going into the break 2-1 up against Watford. And the second half was not quite good enough from us. The first half... Looking at that, Emmanuel Dennis scoring from really from the start of the game, 30 seconds in, only to be offside. He had a disappointing game today, did Dennis. He was not up to it, I think, in where he really needed to be in his headspace. And it, this, it was a sign of things to come because even though that went in in the first half, right through the start, it was offside. He did not watch his line very well there, Dennis. And Arsenal against the run of play scoring early on through Odegaard. It was a really good goal. Not enough tracking back, not enough closing down space. Watford did not press the ball appreciably today as I expected them to do. They played a little bit of a higher line through much of that first half. And then they dropped it off as Arsenal took the lead. And they scored, as I said, in that uh, moment around, what, eight minutes or so in Odegaard scoring. But then credit uh, uh, Cucho Hernandez for coming back with an excellent goal of his own to equalize things for Watford. But for the break, another mistake. It was the cleverly mistake, as I mentioned earlier, that led in Bakayo Saka, and he just punished Ben Foster and Watford there with a sublime finish. No chance for Foster, although perhaps a bit far off his line for that second goal. It was Watford 1, Arsenal 2 at the break. And so Watford, despite being down 2-1, still had impetus to go forward in the second half. And they did some... But then they took the hand off the break and left Arsenal so much space in the field there. And Arsenal took advantage of it to score their third to take a 3-1 lead before Musa Sissoko scoring his second goal of the season for the Orns, scoring from a really tight angle. Good finish from him to make it a 2-3 deficit just before the 90-minute mark. And that was really all Watford could do. They could not press for that equalizer Manuel Dennis in the second half, an astonishing sitter. Uh, he managed to blaze it over. I don't know how he did, but he did. Blazed the thing over the crossbar. I don't know how in front of the rookery when you have the ball with all that space between you and the goal to shoot him, and you can't make that happen. Uh, Emmanuel Dennis, a finisher of his pedigree, should not be blasting that over the bar. Not, not at it today, Dennis. Just didn't have that same zip and sharpness he had at Aston Villa and indeed um, through parts of the Manchester United game. But that is it for Watford in terms of playing any of the teams that are really quality teams now in the Premier League at the Vic. They've now got the home games remaining against teams like Brentford and Burnley and Leeds and Leicester and Everton. Those are their games remaining at the, at the Vic. And they've got to win all of those really to have a chance 
um, and see what they can get away from home now. It's become that kind of desperation with 11 Premier League games left. As for the rest of this game in general, the way Watford played, I thought again, their attacking endeavor was there. It was pleasing to see the starting lineup have João Pedro in it. It's well about time that he was there. Now, he didn't have an extraordinary game by any stretch, but to have someone who is a threat of his pace and his quality is reassuring, at least as far as I'm concerned. And Cucho Hernandez, as I said, the superb overhead kick for that goal, well taken there in the game to respond to Arsenal's uh, early goal. I thought that was very good. Cucho Hernandez did himself no harm. I think you've got to start this starting three again in your attack. If you're going to go 4-3-3, three, three, this, ha- this has to be a 4-3-3. Three, three. Josh King has got to be on the bench here. When he comes back from injury, he has to sit. Make him fight for his place. Make Josh King fight to regain his place. Your Premier League lives are flickering before you. You cannot go wrong with putting those three in the lineup again to start your next game at Wolves this coming Thursday. Have what you had in the starting lineup again today for the front three, at least, when you've got Jao Pedro on one side, Dennis in the middle, and Kucha Hernandez on the right-hand side. That should be your starting lineup, quite frankly, in the front three for the rest of this season. Josh King has got to take a back seat here, fight for his place. Roy, please, make Josh King fight for his place, because if you don't, he's going to take it for granted that he's always going to be in the starting lineup, and I don't think that with Josh King not scoring since late November of last year, he should be taking that starting role for granted. When you've got hungrier players who are scoring goals, like Acucho Hernandez, like Jao Pedro, who has scored more recently than Josh King has. Jao Pedro has scored two goals in the time that Josh King has not scored any in these last three plus months. So Roy, please, this is it now. We have got to start this front three of Dennis and Ped Jao Pedro and Hernandez. That has to be your front three for the rest of this season. And bring Samuel Carlu on earlier. Please bring him on earlier. You have to bring him on. Or what you can do is start Carlu as one of the left, on the left or the right, and have maybe, I don't know, would you have a link up and drop uh, Jao Pedro to a 10 role? I don't know if you can really do that, though, with that kind of formation. But you've got to have Carlu coming off the bench a lot earlier than you did today. He comes into the game in the 89th and 90th minute, I think far too late. Well, in the late, in the 80s, I forget which minute it was in the 80s, but he's in the game far too late for me. Samuel Carlu looked bright and and looked really up for it in the five or six minutes he was on. First touch was a really good shot, a good shot, powerful shot straight at Aaron Ramsdale. He had to had to kind of palm it up before he gathered it in. That was encouraging, even though it was straight at Ramsdale. It's a sign of intent. You've got to keep pressing the goal. And Ramsdale was given things to think about at times in this game, but generally speaking, he was largely untroubled. Watford did try and did at sometimes trouble that Arsenal back line, but they needed to do it more consistently and more often, of course. But, you know, when you're down 3-1 in the game, your heads are going to drop and their heads clearly dropped in this game, Ben Foster's kicking was poor in the second half, flatlining kicks when he should be diagonaling them and getting behind that Arsenal defense. You have to go route, run in, route one in these games now. I think you're going to have to see a lot more route one coming out of this Watford side now, going to these games against Wolves and Southampton. Those are their next two games, both away. One on Thursday, one next Sunday. That is going to have to be your diet. And the actual ball has to be diagonal, not flatlined straight to the goalkeeper at your opposing end. That is not going to do it. Carlu has got to have a larger imprint in these games, and Cleverly's got to sit. Tom Cleverly has to sit down and come into these games later on. He is the kind of player for me that now in his career should be coming off the bench, not starting these games. He had no effect on the game at all today. In fact, a number of players let themselves down today. Not the usual standards from Samir. Uh, I just didn't see it quite from Samir today. Cathcart, uh, he did okay. Femenia did okay. Camera had a lot to do. Um, I think he did as well as he could, considering he's against uh, Bikayo Saka. I mean, Saka is just such a, You see how good Saka is for Arsenal. And Arsenal today were playing tip-top football. But the, the frustration for me is that we gave them these chances And that you can't do with a team that is as technical as Arsenal are. You cannot give away balls 
in and around your midfield and across your 18 yard box because Arsenal are going to punish you. And they were in the mood today. Arsenal could have had at least a couple more goals. They hit the post in one of these games and one of the opportunities they had. And Watford did not, in, in best of my memory, have a corner all day long. Watford needed to be more aggressive in the second half. And again, when you're down 3 1, you can see the heads dropping. So that was a difficult task. But that is when you should have brought on Carlo, not in the 86th minute or whenever it was, you brought him in. So for Roy Hodgson, I think poor subs today didn't understand why he took off Lauza. Lauza, yes, he made a mistake, but he was lively. He was spirited. You see him having a go at the Arsenal players. He was pushing Jacques off the ball. He was pushing a couple of other players off the ball. You know, that that's what you've got to do. You're fighting for your Premier League life. You need players like a Lauser, who is technical, who is gifted, who is skilled, but also who's got some brawn, got a little bit of guts to him, a little, you know, a little aggressiveness to him. You have to fight like your lives are on the line here. And Lauza did that today, and then he gets subbed off. And I don't understand that substitution. I think Roy Hodgson all overall today, not subbing very well at all. Then he finally subs off. Tom Cleverley for Carlu later on when that's the sub you should have taken first. You should have taken Cleverley off, I think, around the 65th minute and then put Carlu in the game. I mean, that's what you should have done. I mean, I don't understand what Roy was doing there, but for whatever reason, that's what he did. And I would have taken uh, Cleverley off, quite frankly, I would have taken him off at half time and, and put Carlu in and, and then try to keep going forward. Listen, there's no, there's no time to be timid now. It's got to be full cavalry charge. And you're not going to get a full cavalry charge if you're keeping people like Carlo on the bench. What's the point of having an attacking starting lineup with Dennis and Cucho and Ja Pedro? And then you're not going to bring on Carlo in the second half until the 85th or 86th minute. It makes no sense to me. So the, the substitute to me today, not up to scratch for Mr. Hodgson, but the opportunity now is. They're at Wolves. You know, Wolves to me have not been any great shakes at home. They've had a lot of decent performances, no question about it. They're a very solid side, but Wolves to me can be had. Uh, Crystal Powers absolutely exploited them yesterday at the Molyneux Stadium there in Wolves. And I know that the away form for Watford is much better. They're going to have to really step it up now. 11 games left to play in this Premier League season, and the wins have got to start coming, or we will be looking at championship football here and Watford now, there's still a chance. There's still every chance to stay in this league, but they have to start winning these games. It's no good to be playing and scoring two goals against Arsenal, but conceding three. That defense has got to tighten up. The balance has got to be redirected now toward this forward line. And this is a good sign of it today. You take away a silver lining in a game like this, and the silver lining is, is that they are scoring goals with this forward line, this forward three. And the silver line is, is that despite Dennis missing an appalling sitter, um, surely he'll have his shooting boots on this coming Thursday against Wolves. And I think a chance like that will go in for him. I think it's sitting now for Watford to start attacking these games away from home and be fearless and be bold and go forward. This has been the Yuan's 10-minute take.